Hey guys, Vegan Cyclist. Today we're talking about how much fitness you need to race. We're gonna talk about how much fitness you need to do your first race, about how much fitness you need to be competitive for each category, and I even asked some other local racers on how much fitness they need, or about what percent fitness they are when they go into their first race of the season, and where they were when they very first started cycling. So when I first started racing, I was asking my local bike shop about kind of where I needed to be. Where was Cat 5? Because when I have it, if you've never raced before, you don't really understand uh, where the fitness level is. It's sort of this empty void, this, this, this question mark area of how fast do I need to be? And if the local people you've ridden with are only go 16 miles, 17 miles an hour on flats, well then your your spectrum of understanding how fast someone can really be, you know, there's just not enough data there. But so I wanted to understand, okay, where where do I need to be? If I was gonna do something to get ready for racing, what would it be? And this bike shop told me that you need to hold 24 miles an hour for about an hour all by yourself. And honestly, that's horrible advice for someone that's about to do their very first race because there isn't really a set metric for someone to say, okay, if I can do this, then I am ready, especially speed. Because when you're in the group, 24 miles an hour is, is not, it's not the same as by yourself. And you can sit in and if you kind of know how to ride within a group, an average speed of 25, 26, 27 miles an hour in a race definitely doesn't feel like that if you were doing that on your own. Like I've said in other videos, if you go out and you train and you train and you train and you train and then you go out and get dropped, you might be really discouraged and that might stop you from racing. But if you go out with no expectations and the kind of the mystery of how fit you need to be will get explained when you race and you'll say, okay, well either I'm here or I'm there or I'm, I'm nowhere close, but it will shed some light on an area that you need to be able to, to be in. So let's look at it like this. 0% is where I was when I never had rode a bike. And 100% is the fittest I've ever been in my life on the bike. So the most, my best FTP, my best power, totally on form. So the last five years of racing have looked like this. My Cat 5 span or career, right, existed within this part of my fitness. So I was probably about 20% fit before going into my first race, I had done some fast group rides and kind of was able to feel out about how fast a group can go. But once I did my first race and I realized how fast everyone is and to be competitive, I needed to be way better, right? But then Cat 4 existed in this area, Cat 3 was about here, and then when I upgraded to 2, which means you also race with the pros and the Cat 1s, so it's Pro 1-2, the minimum amount of a fitness that I feel that I need to just be able to stay in a race exists pretty high on the high end scale. Around 70% is where I would say I'm, I'm good and ready to start racing. Now I start to build up to that fitness through the off season, but even if I wasn't that fit, the first race that I do is not something that I'm trying to be that competitive in, it's where I'm just trying to start building up my fitness. But I asked some other racers, and this is what they had to say. No, I'm not 50 cent. <laughs> you were not really gonna know you're not fit enough until you race. Like my 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 first race, I just jumped in and like I got lapped twice. Yeah. And I was just like, alright, I gotta actually like start riding my bike. So that told me I gotta actually like ride. And then I would ride like once or twice a week and I did another race and like I got lapped once. And I was just like, so like I rode my bike so twice out of the week to like four or five days out of the week and I just, I, I finished the race. So then like that little progress is like, okay, I'm gonna start doing this you know, more often and keep more consistent. So well, when I first started racing, I was like 205 pounds. And then like when I actually started doing it, I dropped like 185 pounds. And that was just by riding my bike consistently. So I would say the best way to know if you're fit or not is just to try it first. 100% being the fittest you've ever been at what at what range do you think you're good enough to start racing? I think you don't necessarily need to be at 100 to start racing. I think, you know, somewhere between where you feel comfortable, like where you can be out on course and and, and stay with the group and, and be able to like move with the accelerations and, and not feel like you're gonna, you know, get dropped off the back. 
is when like you're, you can be ready to race at any level. And I run like three times a week before I started racing. And within two years, I started racing the elite level. And that's when you have to really put in the hours and and start doing more more like the training and more specific workouts besides just going out and riding your bike. Oh, today? So it's a group thing. Like you can sit behind someone and you can be going 28, and that's like you going 17 by yourself regularly, like a regular effort. You know, I think. I think you would, like, I think a metric would be, like, you you would have to be able to ride at least 40 minutes, like, pretty hard, like, pretty aggressively with your heart rate, like, kind of high. I think when I first started off racing, which was in 2014, 30% out of 100. 30%? Yeah, so 3 out of 10. Okay. But, uh, so I think anybody can start racing. I think it's great to start racing, and for me, it was, you race to gain fitness. So a lot of it was just get out there, get on your bike race learn from your mistakes which was learning r rather quickly to make mistakes and how to improve upon that but yeah. now that you're at an elite level yeah. does that change oh for sure i think for right now i'm probably close to 100 like as good as i have ever been here i was very close probably okay let's say i'm at 95 percent right now out of 100 i think i started at 90. That I just I I put in so many more hours going into the season that I was already at a very high level of fitness, and which makes the races so much easier. But at the same time, you make them as hard as you want to make them. I think it was closer to eighty percent, a little bit less fit. And then I think you race yourself into shape. And I mentor a lot of races. And when I talk to people who haven't raced, I talk to beginning racers, some people are hesitant to get going early on, I say get out there and race because there's a couple different ways to do it. One of them is to, to do your training over the winter and come into the race season. You hit the ground running like Hannah did, racing at 90% early on and then she had to take a break after the end of February and then kind of reboot. But the other way to do it is to race yourself into shape. You do the best you can because you only have so many hours that you can train. You have a, a life outside of cycling. So then at some point the racing season happens, don't wait, jump into it and just get going. So I don't really even know where the ceiling is. I think you keep racing yourself into shape and then you kind of fall off and you have to reboot. You have to take some time off and take a rest week or go go somewhere and recharge. And then you get back into racing and you see where your new ceiling is. Right on. So here's the consensus, is that if you're about to do your first race, if you've never raced before, your fitness RPM can exist way on the low end because your first race should not be about how you're gonna do, it's more about gaining the knowledge of what your local group is like. If your Cat 5s are extremely strong, or maybe they're not that strong, it doesn't matter, but it's gonna shine some light on this gray area, this unknown area of how fit you need to be. Once you find out how fit you need to be, which you'll find out by racing, then you can start structuring your training and have this real guided idea of where you know you need to be now fitness for riding with the group or riding in your first race and fitness for being competitive is completely different now this ranges by area but here's this kind of neat chart that shows watt per kilo for i think one minute five minute and 20 minutes for each category so if you kind of want to know where you need to be in the future to be able to be a two or a one or a three or whatever your goal is you can kind of look on here and gauge that but so how much fitness do you need to race? If it's your first race, just get out there. You'll figure it out. Cat four, three, you're gonna start needing to have some higher in fitness. And definitely with P12s, just your baseline fitness so that you don't get spit out the back right away has to be kind of big. So that is a, a an inherent commitment that you're gonna have to make if you upgrade to that, because if you don't stay on top of your training, you can easily lose that base amount of fitness to where just hanging in the pack is very difficult to do. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Vegan Cyclist, yeah.